Um, Mr. Speaker, I rise in lending my support to, to the bill where we will collect 2.5% levy for health and security. And that is in keeping with the theme of the Prime Minister's budget for 2023-2024. And as I articulated earlier, promises made and promises kept. Mr. Speaker, I lend support to the bill and to add to the contributions made by my colleagues and specifically to the contributions made by the Honorable Prime Minister, member for Castries East on the area of security. And when we speak of security, Mr. Speaker, Many times we only speak of the police and we do not broaden it to include the protective services. All these areas contribute to security of the country. And when we speak of security of the country, Mr. Speaker, I speak to the role of the police, the fire service, border lake correctional facility, probation and parole, and we are in the process of establishing the Youth Justice Unit. Mr. Speaker, the police, they have agreed to look at rebranding the police. They are developing their strategic plan and setting their agenda on how they will operate and deal with the issue of security. This is the best time, Mr. Speaker, to give the support that is needed to improve health and security in the country. And when we look at, for example, the operations of the police, there are quite a bit of support that are out there to give support to the police. But many agencies are willing to give you support if you are making a contribution. And if St. Lucia, we say, well, we have nothing, and we are expecting other agencies to assist us, they may not be forthcoming. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, I see this levy as an effort by the government of St. Lucia to match and support any support that we are likely to get from outside. Because before people offer you support, they want to know what are you doing on your own to support yourself. And you cannot just wait and wait for support outside and expect things to happen. And with that, Mr. Speaker, the law enforcement officers will get, get up opportunities for exposure and training at the regional and international level so that they can improve on the the, the skills and abilities. Mr. Speaker, I can share with my cabinet colleagues, as I have always said, that many times we speak of people, we speak about people, but we must learn to speak with them. And it's when you visit the site where these persons operate, you get a better understanding of the issues that affect them. And I have reported in this house that I have visited mostly all the police stations, all the fire stations, bodily, probation and parole. And when you see the condition, you see the need to invest a lot heavier in these departments. And Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister has invested heavily and is planning to invest a lot more in equipment and infrastructure. And Mr. Speaker, the records are clear that between the St. Lucia Labour Party and the United Workers Party, 
just check the records as you travel throughout the country. And you will see which government has built most of the police stations, fire stations in this country. And it is all. Well, Babolo started and we finished it. That's the police station. But mostly all the police stations and all the fire stations, including Bonale Correctional Facility, all these were built by the Labour Party government. And that is heavy investment, Mr. Speaker. Then this government came in and there was no custody suite, Mr. Speaker. Deputy Speaker. And government now is planning to build a custody suite. Huh? It's building it. So all the heavy weight is left for this government to do. The heavy investment is left for this government to do. And then we are hearing the member on the other side is saying it is not the right time. He should have told us which time is the right time. Monies do not fall from the sky. And you heard what the people in St. Lucia said. They are willing to contribute for health and national security. They want to ensure that the funds go for the purpose. And this government, without a levy, has invested so much in health and national security. The hospital, okay, EU, was built by the St. Lucia Labour Party. The records are there, Mr. Speaker, um, Deputy Speaker. Mr. Deputy Speaker, when we look at the situation with emigration, Mr. Speaker, they are complaining about the environment in which they work. And that has created a big scandal in the whole country. Now, this government has to find a new location. We have to invest money in that new location to ensure that the workers get a decent place for them to work, Deputy Speaker. The passport issue, Mr. Speaker, a lot of talk. But when the matter is addressed, you hear nothing on the other side. Everything is about scandal, scandal, scandal. Yes. And the, 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 the pipe that was choked, it took about uh, two weeks to unchoke it, where over thousands of passports that were clogged in the pipeline was cleared within a week, Deputy Speaker. Deputy Speaker, this government is going to invest heavily in Bordele. And the Prime Minister spoke about it earlier. The Bordele Correctional Facility, Deputy Speaker, has been in existence for almost 20 years. Exposed to the sea blasts from the Atlantic Ocean. And all the metal is rusty. The condition is like an, a forgotten institution. And this government, in this budget, has allocated approximately $7 million to fence bodily. Without a levy, how will government raise all that money to improve the situation for security, Mr. Deputy Speaker? Technology is the way to go. We are talking about crime and indiscipline and everything. We cannot deal with the situation in the old-fashioned way, Deputy Speaker. We have to use technology to address a lot of the challenges we have. And technology comes with a cost. Deputy Speaker, we have a situation at Bordelais where we have mentally ill inmates. And the present institution did not cater for that category of inmates. Bordelais is for persons who are on remand or convicted. But the mental state of the individual is not factored in. And they cannot go to the wellness centers because the wellness center was not designed as a correctional facility. So now we have to look for that midway 
facility that will cater for mentally ill inmates. And Deputy Speaker, that comes with a cost, and that is where the levy will assist government in creating that environment so that government does not get sued for not giving the adequate care and treatment to inmates. Deputy Speaker, we also speak of persons who have served their time at Bodily and they are released. Some of these persons, Deputy Speaker, they cannot fit into the society. They have been out for too long. And that is why we have a high percentage of recidivism. Persons who have been to Bodily and they commit a crime and they go back. About 43% of these persons go back. What is missing is what we call the halfway house. We need an environment where the people transit, make a transition from bodily into the society. And we are in discussion now with the visiting justice to see whether we can get that facility. They have already started identifying a place where we can do some retrofitting, refurbishment. So these people spend about three to six months in that area where they begin to reintegrate into the society and find work for them. And sometimes when they stay at Bonale, when they go back, they don't, most of their families and friends have disappeared. They feel lost. So they feel more comforted if they go back into the prison. So we have to create that transition for the inmates. And as has been indicated, Deputy Speaker, we are trying to convert or ensure that the bodily correctional facility is a correctional facility, is not a prison. We have to do rehabilitation so that when these people live there, they are better citizens. They will conduct themselves better and they will not engage in activities that are contrary to the law. Deputy Speaker, we are looking at the fire service. The fire service played a critical role during Bordele, um, during um, COVID, in carrying people up and down. The ambulances were busy every day and every night. And this department saved many lives for us. And now they are asking for the headquarters. The Prime Minister has allocated some money to start the feasibility study to get a new headquarters for the fire service. All these are areas where we need money to provide the services that are needed. The, fire, the, the police is asking for the new police headquarters. This comes with a price. Everything that the government has to do, we have to get the money. And we have a responsibility to convince the people out there that they need quality care, health care, and they need maximum security for them to live in a safe and conducive environment for them to become productive citizens. I know many people, well, the opposition has completely disappeared now, but 50% um, wasn't there, the other 50% just left. But we have a responsibility, Deputy Speaker, to educate the people in St. Lucia and to let them know that this government is committed to their safety, to their security, so that they can continue to be productive citizens in this country. Deputy Speaker, what is of greatest importance at this point is to build a network among the protective services so that they can provide maximum safety, protection, and security for the St. Lucian citizen. Our visitors, everybody must feel safe in our environment. And therefore, Mr. Speaker, we see the collaboration among all the productive, protective services working together, developing a plan so that together we can move forward. Upon um, assumption of the position for Home Affairs, 
when I met the organizations representing the different protective services as minister with responsibility for labor, the report that came to me was that they ranked, they felt ranked among the protective services. They said the police are ranked number one, fire ranked number two, and Guadalupe ranked number three. And therefore there was always this tension among them as to who is more important, what category of officers are more important than others. But over time, having worked together, Deputy Speaker, we have noticed the collaboration among them and seeing all of them as of equal importance playing different roles in national security protection for the people. And for this reason, Deputy Speaker, the, the Prime Minister commissioned a report to prepare benchmark qualification for persons in the protective services. And the reason for this is because they were treating the protective services like ordinary public servants. And because of the nature of their work, you cannot equate them with regular public servants. Because a lot of them were promoted based on certification and not so much on skills, knowledge, and abilities. And if you have to engage in protective services, in security, skills, knowledge, and ability is critical in carrying out your duties. Not whether you have a master's, yes, that is important, but the emphasis has to be on how well you can carry out your duties. And Deputy Speaker, I want to report, and I have mentioned it to the Prime Minister and Cabinet of Ministers, that the report is in for no, the protective services. It captured police, fire, and border in terms of the benchmark qualification for these officers and what would be necessary to determine where they fall within the ranks. And when you have to do promotion, what is it you have to look for in an officer and not so much competing with public servants that say they have a master's in this, that and the other, so they move from this grade to. Hmm. But for these officers, you have to look at it differently based on the nature of the work. Deputy Speaker, we need to strengthen the leadership in these organizations. And these leadership in these organizations end up being bottleneck. Bottleneck in the sense that you find only one or two persons at the top. You need a broader group for strengthening leadership. We need to build secondary leadership. It's like when the top leader is there, you, you don't know where are the others. How many, you know, you should have a pool of persons who can do the job almost of equal level, Deputy Speaker. So these are the areas we are looking at, building the capacity of the protective services and changing the whole landscape. And Deputy Speaker, we are also comparing what we do in St. Lucia and what's happening in other countries in the Caribbean, in the UK, in the US, in France. We have to compare and raise the bar for our protective services and law enforcement. And for this reason, Deputy Speaker, that level will play a critical role in ensuring that the government can meet the expectation of the officers. Deputy Speaker, some of the DSA si c'est pour nous ni bon santé à cette liste, si c'est pour nous ni pour protéger et ni bon sécurité à cette liste, vous êtes mani pour toi payer l'argent pour faire ça. Vous ne pouvez pas aller et puis un petit parti plein de monde pour ça mettre loi pour mettre bon santé. Santé c'est un bagage qui a coûté un chèque l'argent. Un des speakers. When you sit in the cabinet and you see the report of persons seeking medical assistance, it will cost this country an arm and a leg. It will cost a fortune. And therefore, government has to find creative ways to protect the people. 
to ensure that they have good health um, conditions. And I applaud the Minister of Health, Wellness, and the Elderly Affairs for his energy and his drive. And I know, Deputy Speaker, we will achieve. I'm very confident that we are going to get health and security under control. And that is why the Prime Minister is investing heavily in this area for this financial year. One of the critical areas, Deputy Speaker, in looking at health and security for this year, which the Prime Minister has put as the main area of focus, is for us, Deputy Speaker, to look at mainstreaming health and security across all government programs. Every department must factor in areas of health and security in all the plans. And when they get support, they must secure support for both health and security in the funding. And that will help boost the contribution that goes directly to health. We cannot say, that's Ministry of Health, that's not my business, I don't have anything to do with that. No. Health and security is the business for every department of government, every agency, every NGO, everybody in the society must focus on health and security, at least give it priority for this year. And that is how we are going to raise the revenue we need, not just the levy, but other areas to give it the support that it needs. And with that, Mr. Speaker, I'm confident that during the financial year 23 to 24, we are going to see a significant dent made in that area, a significant push. And one of the things I'm very pleased about, Mr. Deputy Speaker, is the fact that St. Jude, the St. Lucian population is waiting with bated breath on what will happen with St. Jude. And those on the other side that have reduced their attendance to zero are hoping that nothing happens. <laughs> nothing happens. That is our, that is why they want to give us a pass or a fail grade. And strategically, the Prime Minister and his team is on course. The sail is up in the air. And there is no turning back. There is no turning back, and this is why the levy will come to give us the additional revenue and support to achieve that objective. And I'm very confident with the drive from the Minister of Health, the support from the Prime Minister, and the broader support from the Cabinet of Ministers, we are not going to focus on the detractors. They are trying to find all kinds of stories. They have tried to drag me in so many things, but I'm so focused, I don't see them on either side, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I, I keep going back to the, to, to, to the budget. I go back to the manifesto, and I say, this is what we promised the people, and let us remain focused on that. And that is what the people will use to judge us by, what we promise and what we deliver. And I'm telling you, when I heard the Minister of Health talk about um, taking um, care, maternal care, and I always remember, and I feel comforted, that I am part of a government called the Labour Government. Because before you can deliver the baby, Deputy Speaker, you must first go in labour. You have to go in labour. You cannot deliver unless you go in labor. So now we are in labor. We are getting ready. We are pushing. We are pushing. And that baby will be born. And when that baby is born, that baby will be healthy, strong, good, and ready to go. Mr. Speaker, I applaud the Prime Minister for his vision, for his stewardship. He's very firm. And at this hour of the night, we are still discussing health and security for the people of St. Lucia. It tells us that we are serious about the work that we have to do, Mr. Speaker. Yes, yes. And with this, I give my 110% to 
to this bill and let us go ahead and serve the people and deliver what we promised them. I thank you, Deputy Speaker.